Crakes and rails are notoriously secretive skulking birds, always found near water edges where cover is close by. Over many years, we've been lucky enough to manage to film the two rails and five crakes found on the Australian continent, plus the now critically endangered endemic wader, Australian painted snipe. Here is a glimpse of these hidden treasures of Australia's birding world. One of the most difficult species, Lewin's rail, can turn up at the muddy edges of the massive Murray River system where it flows out to sea at Goolwa. This is perfect rail and crake habitat. Patience and luck are required for even a fleeting look at birds in this family. But while we wait for the tide to recede, refeeling some crake feeding habitat, there are other interesting water birds to watch. It's April and migratory waders have mostly left by now, but these green shanks might be overwintering. Spotless crake, dark and unobtrusive, is the first in this group of birds to venture out. Its small size can be seen as it forages beside a brush bronze wing. You really have to stick to those muddy margins. Here's the spotless crake again, looking like a small black chicken. In better light, as it probes for insects and mollusks, the initially monochromatic colouring is revealed as dark olive brown on the back, grey underneath, with ruby eyes and pinkish legs. There's plenty of activity out on the water while we wait keeping an eye on the edges where a crake may pop out to feed. This fox coming for a drink is a bit discouraging. Crakes breed in these reeds and hardly ever fly. But persistence and some luck has paid off, and at last a Lewin's rail has emerged briefly to feed. Its long, slightly down-curved pink bill and stumpy tail are the features best distinguishing it from the other crakes and rails. It's larger and more colourful than the spotless, but just as secretive, and will dart back into cover at the slightest disturbance.
It's often confused with the more common and more readily seen buff banded rail, which is larger and more colourful with a distinctive white eyebrow and broad orange-brown stripe running through the eye. Lewin's rail, like others in this family, make their own runways beneath the marshy vegetation and use them as escape tunnels. They're very reluctant to fly, another family characteristic. It has a limited distribution in coastal southeast Australia and Tasmania. Lewin's rails were seen in this spot at Gore in March 2009, but obtaining a good close view was almost impossible. Only a small strip of mud was visible from the barrage at low tide on the edge of dense lignum and rushes. So in May 2009, we decided to set up a small hide on a tiny island opposite where they'd been seen. As usual, we waited and had plenty of time to enjoy other birds before a Lewin's rail made its appearance. However, from that hide, we were able to observe them over several days and found that, despite their reputedly crepuscular habits, they were not at all averse to foraging in the middle of the day, probing for insects, mollusks and vegetable matter. Unlike the buff banded rail, the Lewins did not constantly flick its tail. Carefully washed and dismembered mud crabs were a favourite food item. This bird even took a leisurely midday bath. We came back at the end of that year to record the migratory waders that return here from September every year to feed in the rich tidal waters of the river mouth. And of course, we checked on the rails and were delighted to find a juvenile, proof that they had successfully bred somewhere deep in the lignum. And although it seemed more nervous than the adult, indicated by its tail flicking, we were able to also observe it bathing in the open.
Laratinga is an excellent wetland at Mount Barker in the Adelaide Hills. Australian spotted crake is an Australian endemic. It's slightly larger than the spotless crake and Lewin's rail and easier to see, being mainly diurnal and venturing farther into the open while feeding, though always within reach of cover. It ranges over a large area and can appear far inland where there is shallow water on exposed mud. It may be nomadic and seasonal. Its constantly flicking white undertail is diagnostic. Nearby, a spotless crake shows its dark undertail with small white flecks. Like Australian spotted crake, the spotless also has a larger range than the Lewins and can occur far inland. The smallest crake in Australia is Balin's crake, also known as marsh crake, a tiny bird with a worldwide distribution. It has a wide range within Australia and seems to move northwards in winter. Because of its small size and long toes, it can run across floating vegetation like a jacana. It shares the same shy secretive characteristics as the rest of its family, which makes it difficult to observe, even though it may be quite common. Apart from the Great Australian Bight, buff banded rail can be found all the way around coastal Australia and often far inland in all types of wetlands. Taito wetlands in northern Queensland, established by the naturalist and rediscoverer of the night parrot John Young, is a wonderful place for all kinds of water birds. While there we had great views of this colourful bird which is more inclined to venture into the open than most species, preferring to feed on dry land and nest in carefully hidden grass tussocks. Even so, it retains the nervous habits of its family, constantly flicking its tail and making unexpected dashes for cover. It has colonised many offshore islands and is probably the most easily seen of the rails. On a small, very dry island, such as Granite Island in South Australia, it can become habituated to the presence of people. The three remaining species in this group are far less widespread, being confined to the tropical far north of Australia. Australia's only rainforest inhabiting crake, red-necked crake, is restricted to rainforest habitats of northeast Queensland and is mainly nocturnal. It's one of the most difficult to see of an elusive and secretive family, feeding during the night or late dusk and resting and sleeping in dense rainforest along the banks of permanent creeks during the day. Although almost the same height as buff banded whale, it has a slightly larger body and shorter legs, and with far less colourful plumage, it easily merges into the shadows of the rainforest when disturbed. It works methodically down a stream, raking pebbles and leaf litter with billin feet probing for frogs, tadpoles and crustaceans in the water, or insects, snails and worms on land, and readily crosses creeks by swimming.
Down from the trees for a drink, the bird that's been yowling all evening, spotted catbird. Not difficult to hear how it got its name. Another tropical species with far more aquatic habits is found along the coast and inland rivers of northern Australia. This is white browed crake and fog dam provides a perfect habitat. White browed crake is far more easily seen than the shadowy red necked although it spends nearly all its time in or on the water. A small nimble bird with a sooty cap, white brow and cheek line and an extremely long middle toe. It can run over floating vegetation and swim freely. It forages during any part of the day. It sometimes feeds by floating through the water, neck extended, to pick up insects and can be found in swamps and dense mats of floating vegetation bordering lakes and rivers. Here it's exhibiting jacana-like balance. By far the largest of the rails and crakes found in Australia is chestnut rail. The only other known occurrence is the Aru Islands. Despite its size, it's probably one of the most elusive and least known birds in Australia because of the difficulty of penetrating its dense tidal mangrove habitat. The only chance to see this bird is when it emerges onto the mudflats at low tide to peck at the mud for small crabs and crustaceans. Even then it's best to be at a distance, since it shares the extreme wariness of most of this family and uses its powerful greenish legs to run swiftly and vanish into impenetrable mangrove. On this day, we were lucky enough to see adults and a chick and enjoy wonderful views of this impressive bird, the last in this family of Australia's birding hidden treasures. However, there is an even more elusive and now critically endangered bird which shares the same waterside habitat, Australian painted snipe. As David Holland says in his book on waders, every group of Australian birds seems to have one species which is almost impossibly hard to find. Among waders which breed in Australia, it is the painted snipe. We were lucky enough to see these birds twice in past years at Whites Road wetlands just 27 kilometres north of Adelaide, but we had to wait until dusk before they emerged from cover to feed. During the day, they loaf in the shade of cover, unmoving, well camouflaged and very difficult to detect. They're not a true snipe, but closer to the Jacana family. The females are slightly larger, with head, neck and upper breast a deep reddish chocolate colour. Males are distinguished by gold spangling on the upper wing coverts and grey-brown streaking on the head. These beautiful, enigmatic birds are nomads of temporary wetlands. As the present population is estimated at just 340, there are vital efforts ongoing to trace their movements about which very little is known. These birds may have sensed us and have frozen into immobility.
The low evening sun illuminates the golden spangling on these dazzling birds. Six years later, they were sighted again at White's Road. But where? We couldn't spot them at first. Other birds were feeding, but the snipe were invisible. We waited. They emerged tentatively from a clump of grass as dusk approached. Whoops, they've changed their minds. Must be too early. Forty minutes later, they seemed more energetic and confident enough to attempt to feed in the lower light. Were they the same birds as in 2011? If so, where had they been? Where had they come from? So many questions with no answers about this mysterious, beautiful, but vanishing species. <laughs> 